In this video on c -sharp Basics, we'll be taking a look at method overloading and signatures. Method signatures are the declarative statement of the method. So for example, private int add to integers, and with parentheses int value 1, int value 2 for the parameters. This declaration of the method with all of these different pieces, the private int add to integers and then the parameters, all make up the signature of the method. Method overloading is where you can create two or more methods of the same name, but with different signatures. So for example, if we have a new method called add to numbers, where we're saying that the data type that's going to be returned back to the caller is a data type of int, and the add to numbers method takes value one and value two to be both types of integers, this should suggest that it is the same type of method that the add to integers method does. However, I could have yet another declaration of the add to numbers method, but in this case, the return data type is double and the two parameters are both of a type double. Both of these methods can coexist inside the same class, despite the fact that they both have the same name. Along with the other two method declarations, we can have yet another add to numbers with a return data type of int, but you'll notice that we have a third parameter described here. We have a max total, and this could be a maximum total for the value that we anticipate to be returned back to the add to numbers. And maybe if the value of the two, uh, value one and value two being added together, if they were to be greater than the max total value, then the max total value would be returned instead. That's just a suggestion of what this particular method might wanna do. But you can see that all three cases, all three of these method declarations have the same name, but they all have something a little bit different in their signature. Let's take a look at this a little bit more in depth in some actual code. So here we have our my class class object. And as it stands right now, the do math method does not take any parameters. This is one signature. This one signature for the do math method will do these particular types of actions. Additionally, we can go ahead and create another method of the same name. So we'll do public, and this time we'll say int do math, and it will accept a int value one and int value two. So it will actually take two parameters of data type int. We'll go ahead and add our scope here for this new do math method. And what we can do now is we can just go ahead and we can pass along perhaps we can do a return of uh, whatever the add to integers method returns back. And we can just simply pass in value one and value two. So this would actually pass in these two parameters passed into the do math method, pass them into the add to integers method, and then that would return back a data type of int from the add to integers method, which would then again be returned from the do math method. So now we could write our program class so that to utilize this new version of the do math method, instead of having to pass along our properties, uh, our property values, we can comment this out and instead simply do something like this. My, let's do a console dot write line, because we're gonna wanna write this out to the console window. We'll do my object do math, and it's going to pass in a couple of parameters. We'll do five and nine. Then we'll terminate our statement with a semicolon, and then of course do our console.readline. And now we're basically doing the same do math method, right? We're calling the same do math method, but because it operates a little bit differently, I have to utilize it a little bit differently, right? We have this my class method, which can do either this do math method, which actually writes the console window for us, or I can use the do math method that accepts two integer parameters. And that particular one will simply return back the value from the add to integers method. 
So if I save this and run this, we can see that the value of 5 plus 9 is 14. So let's do one more do math method here. We'll do a public int do math. So it's going to be the same return type as this do math, but this time it's going to accept three parameters. The first one is going to be value one. Second value is going to be another int of value two. But we'll add a third parameter here, and it's going to be a max total. So we'll go ahead and create another int variable that's going to hold the value of our total. And it's going to be assigned the result from our add to integers method, where we're just going to pass in value one and value two, which were passed into this uh, into this do math method here. And we'll, uh, we'll assign that to the total. Now, if the total is now greater than max total, then what we actually want to do is reassign the value of total to be max total. So we're reassigning, we're saying, if the total that comes from this add to integers is higher than the max total that we pass in, then we actually want to replace the total with our max total. And then we can just go ahead and return total. You'll see that we get no red squiggly lines, which means all of these methods work together. They work fine because they all have slightly different signatures. The first one doesn't have any return type and doesn't accept any parameters. The second one takes two parameters and has a return type of int. And this third one here, this do math, takes three parameters and returns a data type of int. So all three of these actually perform slightly different methods, slightly different ways. And if we save this and go back to our program, now all I have to do here for this do math, this new implementation of the do math method, is add on an additional value here. You can see our IntelliSense actually offers us this max total as soon as I add that second comma there. One additional thing that you'll see here is while I'm actually utilizing this overload, you can see that there are three different versions of the same do math method. And if I click on the up and down arrows, it'll actually give me some IntelliSense to show me the different ways that I can use this do math method. I have a void return with a do math method that takes no parameters. Second, I can return an int data type, which takes value one and value two. And then I could also use this third version, which takes two integers or three integers, excuse me, as three parameters and returns back a data type of int. So I'll go ahead and say that this should actually max out at 11. And if we save this and run this, we see that the value 11 is returned since that is the max value that we passed in and the coding logic that we put behind the do math method for that one overload suggests that you can't go beyond the value of 11. It'll just simply return back that max amount.